Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I don't know if you can see me though. Not yet, not yet. Okay, let's see. Make sure this is working. Can't see myself. Okay, uh, do you see me now? Yeah, we can see you, but we don't see your slides yet. Okay, great. So, uh, thank you very much for having me. Actually, I won't have any slides because I'm going to show you everything we did related to this uh, directly inside Samsung, the program that we're developing. Um, so, um, thank you for having me. It's really nice to, uh, to see uh, familiar names, at least, even if I don't always see the faces. I wish we could meet in person. <laughs> So um, we, um, the thing is that we started the uh, one on Chrome. So we used to be an INRIA group, research group, where we developed Samsung, a platform for molecular design. And we uh, started a company. So I left research completely and I brought along some colleagues. Uh, I left research completely and we started a company in 2018. So what you're going to see is preliminary results, but mostly, what I'm going to show is what people do because we have announced that we're uh, giving everything for free for people working on COVID. And so we've had many uh, requests and many people are using Samsung to, uh, to do some docking, to do some analysis, to do some models. And I'm going to show you a bit what, uh, what they do. Um, so oh, sorry, Samsung. just one second, Stefan. Sorry, uh, yeah. I think I think somebody forgot to mute the, their mic, so there's a little bit of an echo. So if you could ah. make sure that the no, no, it's not for you, Stefan. Of course, it's for the others. Um, so yeah, if everybody could mute their mic. Perfect. Is it okay now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, just very briefly, you can do many, many things because the idea is that uh, nobody can do everything. So we made it open so that everybody can integrate their research, their expertise. And so the result is now that uh, Samsung has many capabilities for building, visualizing, simulating, uh, analyzing, scripting, et cetera, et cetera, extend extending. So, for example, what you can do is build stuff, build, let's say, uh, ligands by assembling uh, fragments. So let's say I'm going to minimize this, uh, work on my structure, then uh, extend it, um, edit it, move it. Uh, for example, I'm going to, to move this or select, uh, select fragments that I'm going to move. Let's say I select this, um, can do shapes, etc. as well. And then once you have built things, potentially you can make them more and more complex. So this could be an example of a ligand that you would test. Um, again, the main protease, for example. And so uh, you can visualize this in different ways. One thing you can do, for example, is just saving uh, this model, for example, um, in an OBJ uh, format, and then you're gonna use that in a presentation uh, when you're going to communicate about your results. And you change the that resolution, and then you go to uh, PowerPoint and you import this model. And you're going to be able to have it in your presentations. Uh, so just that, that was my only slide. <clears throat> so once you do this type of things, you can build more complex models. For example, you're going to, uh, create a channel. So this is like potassium channel and you're going to put everything in a folder. Let's say then you're going to do copies of this. You're going to put one here, one here, and one here. And then you're going to move these models, et cetera, et cetera. So you get the idea. The point is that you can build more and more complex things and then prepare simulations, do docking, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So to get to the point for uh, SARS-CoV-2, what people do typically is, uh, let's say download a model from the PDB. So I did it already, but let's do it again. You would enter the code here download it, 
And then you would prepare your system, let's say, for example, for docking. So I would first um, select the existing ligand, remove it, then add hydrogens based on residue types and waters, etc. And let's say I'm going to create uh, a ligand. So well, let's let's be let this be my ligand. I'm going to use Autodoc integrated inside uh, Samson to uh, test to dock this ligand on the, on the structure. So I'm going to say that this is my receptor. This is my ligand. So of course uh, you could use um, you could dock a library of ligands, but here it's just a short demo. And here you have some rotatable bonds that you could uh, activate or deactivate depending on. Uh, the torsions you want to base to uh, to keep in the model, you could change the uh, location of the search box, and then uh, you're going to enter some uh, exhaustiveness for the search and the number of modes that you would like to have. I'm just keep, gonna keep it low to make it fast. Then I'm going to click on Doc Ligand, and um, once everything is done, you have the poses here with the binding affinity that's been predicted. So that's the traditional ligand. That's not the one uh, modified by uh, Maria, for example. And you could look at the different poses. So then you're going to generate the structures corresponding to these models. Let's say you want to visualize them differently. I'm going to visualize the secondary structure of the protein, et cetera, et cetera. So that's typically the type of things that people do. But of course, uh, they dock libraries of ligands, uh, then they use Python scripting to do some analysis and stuff, uh, or we do it for them. Um, mm -mm -mm. Then something else that of course would be very interesting to do is to use the algorithms developed by uh, Alexander Hoffman and Sergei Grudenin in a, a NanoD for normal mode analysis. So let's say I'm removing all these modes here, and I would like to um, compute the flexibility and the ligand. Compute the flexibility of this. Let's, let's open a, a new model. Um, I remove the ligand again. So let's say I want to compute to study the flexibility of this. I'm going to use this module uh, to compute the normal modes, the nonlinear normal modes um, with the algorithms developed by uh, Alexandre and uh, Sergey. I want to say uh, I want to have 10 modes and then I can uh, study the flexibility. Let's visualize it like this. Study the flexibility of the, of the protease, um, combine several modes, uh, animate them, uh, export different configurations based on uh, Let's say I want a number of poses for docking molecules, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And of course, then you might want to simulate um, structures. So what you would do is, let's start fresh, fresh again. You would use a simulator, an offline simulator like Gromax. Um, sorry, I want to remove the ligand. You would use a simulator like Gromax to uh, study in more detail the interactions, provided you have a force field for the for the ligand. So what you would do is select your model, compute the box, increase the box size, uh, probably, and then uh, prepare to solvate the structure and um, prepare it for the next steps of the workflow. So this is going to add solvent, uh, but not minimize the structure. So this is my solvated box. I'm going to remove the initial structure. And then I have the solvated uh, uh, receptor uh, with the ions, et cetera, et cetera. I would then minimize, equilibrate, simulate. Potentially, this would be very slow. So we recently added uh, the possibility to do uh, jobs in the cloud so now there is a job manager and basically what's going to happen is that uh, there is another version of the Gromax 
module coming up which will simulate on the cloud so it's not public yet so basically you click on simulate in the cloud and uh, it asks you the machine you want to use uh, to do the simulation the number of cores the number of gpus and it, uh, it costs uh, different numbers of credits but everything is invisible and everything is managed from from Samsung, so you can uh, just continue using your computer. You can launch several simulations in parallel, to do like comparisons between uh, experiments, sorry, numerical <laughs> conditions, uh, compare numerical experiments, etc., etc. And you have access to the cloud like that uh, easily. And of course, since it's a platform, uh, others can develop extensions and do um, like propose cloud services in uh, in Samsung as well. So. Um, Related to the spike protein, what we did in March when the uh, first rich structures. So if you if you want to get Samsung, you just get to uh, SamsungConnect.net, and then you like you register you uh, and you download it. What we did in March, what Dimitri, who is the CSO of the company and a former member of the Nanodi Group, uh, did in March was to take advantage of two published structures, open and closed state, to uh, interpolate between them using some modules uh, available in Samsung. So the idea was to prepare the system. The, the problem was that the two structures were uh, essentially not directly uh, compatible with each other, like uh, the, in terms of the uh, residues and the, the correspondences between the, the sequences. So, um, Dima did the preparation of these structures and then used a module that um, Koa, a uh, former PhD student in the team, developed to perform uh, motion planning. So uh, interpolation algorithm based on motion planning algorithms that is able to do um, dimensionality reduction to speed up interpolation. So basically what happens is that you select a number of control points in the structure and these control points are used to uh, interpolate, to, to control the structure of the protein. So let, let me show you an example. Let's say I am going to, um, to download a structure, like let's say part of the channel earlier. Let me move it here, what you can do is twist structures using control points. So meaning you say that some control points as are fixed and, and you move the others and you can deform the structures like this. And you have a very efficient algorithm that uses these reduced dimensions, if you want to uh, produce uh, structures for the rest, okay. Uh, you use this as a way to reduce the complexity of your system and speed up instead of uh, like doing brute force uh, simulation and use these to interpolate, to perform a search in the space which has a reduced dimension. And then you can do uh, this interpolation like this and you obtain a first path that you then, you then minimize using a force field using a uh, not elastic bound approach also uh, also inside Samsung. So we provided everything uh, on the web um, and basically you can download it. So you, you click on here, the download link, then you can import it inside Samsung uh, here. And it contains the structures, the visual representations and the path um, of the structure. So that's that's the structure. And here you have the initial path. So you have the, these conformations, open, closed, and you have the path here obtained first by the Arab module. And this is thanks to the reduced dimension, it's super efficient. Like it's a few minutes to compute. And then uh, the path post-processed by the PNEB uh, module to make sure that you find a minimum energy transition uh, corresponding to this path um, computed initially by the Arab module, which um, does a um, more approximate job in terms of energy minimization. 
what time is it? Six. Okay, so just a few minutes um, to tell you what why I'm happy to uh, to talk here. It's because our job now that we're not a research group anymore is not to do the research ourselves, but to try to help others. So uh, I'm here because I'd be happy to, I've seen like excellent software and excellent computational methods, algorithms, and I believe that um, it would be nice to uh, federate them, to integrate them, and to make it easier for people to use them. And uh, so that uh, the, the general idea is that experts should focus on their expertise and stop reinventing the wheel, or stop redoing uh, parsers or visualization when, uh, when you have things that exist already. And, um, and the idea is to basically join forces, <laughs> join forces and uh, so that uh, everybody can uh, help each other by uh, disseminating their research uh, more easily. So if you, if you think that uh, could be interesting, uh, I'll be happy to talk to you because we're basically uh, wanting to uh, collaborate with people. And also, of course, uh, people, uh, I mean, in academia working on COVID, uh, we're giving everything for free. So if you think that these tools might be useful, either what exists already, or because you can just um, use the SDK and develop your own extensions, your own force fields. We have uh, lots of tutorials about how to program uh, apps, uh, how to program force fields, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And now that we have this uh, job cloud, uh, cloud job manager, we are going to be able to um, integrate uh, cloud services, essentially, um, inside Samsung. So um, access uh, a lot of power. So I'll stop here um, and thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you Stefan for this uh, presentation and this remarkable integrated tool. So do we have questions? <coughs> Stefan, <Stephane. laughs> Yes, Stefan, talking to Stefan. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, the, the problem with, uh, so, so Samsung is very promising and interesting and I registered to get a copy, but uh, I had no time to, to, <laughs> to really test it extensively as, mm. as many others. Uh, the, the problem I see with uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the pricing and, and the, the future of the locking, uh, I've been struggling in the past to find funds to keep licenses up to date. Um, and uh, the, the, the problem is uh, when you, we start to invest on such software, uh, we, we, we get stuck at, certain, at a certain point because we, we get no funding or the, there's a lacking year uh, or two. Um, so I was wondering if, if it was possible to, kind of, to find a kind of trade-off uh, uh, with academics. To, to, to overcome this problem because uh, it's difficult to invest on something that we, we know uh, we, we may lack the, 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 the year just after. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I mean, we do, uh, we do lots of um, um, collaboration with academics, uh, like even <laughs> like uh, client academics. Um, something I didn't say is that um, here in the extensions, many things are free. And uh, again, for COVID, uh, everything is free. And uh, anyway, we, there are also a lot of extensions which are hidden and developed, uh, uh, how do you say in English? Like custom extensions developed specifically for research issues. Like uh, right now we're developing with, um, modules to analyze drug transportation uh, in my cells for a university in Bulgaria, for example. Uh, so different things like that. Everything is hidden and confidential because they want to keep a competitive advantage. But for this, they keep the modules uh, for life, for forever, for example. So it's developed once, then uh, they get the source code even if, if they want it, and, uh, and they keep it forever. So there is no issue of uh, pricing uh, that you have to renew. Uh, I don't know if that's, uh, that answers a bit the, the question, but uh, just to continue. So, so it means the basic software is uh, is free. Yes. The, well, you have four uh, configurations. No, I, I saw the modules, but yeah, okay, there. So, mm. well, this is free and will be free forever. Okay. It will always be free. But it depends on what you want to do. So, if this is enough, uh, this is free forever. Then. Uh, 
if you tell me uh, that you would like to have a license, because anyway, that's how uh, your uh, lab works. Uh, I mean, uh, we'll do something. I mean, uh, our goal again is not to, uh, uh, I mean, our goal is to help, like to have an impact. The, the reason we went to uh, uh, business instead of academia is that um, when you want to develop something that's easy to, to use, um, you need to, to work on that full time. I mean, uh, it's very different from what we did before. You know, when you do an algorithm and you do uh, like three benchmarks to show it works for one paper or two or three papers, um, it's, it's not the same when you want software easy to use. You, you need to be full-time development on that. So our goal is to help. So uh, we find solutions to help. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> more questions? And of, co of course, we're still interested in doing the research and the algorithms ourselves. It's just that we, we have limited uh, uh, resources for that at the moment. <coughs> so how, how many of you in the company, Stefan? Uh, right now, we're three. Three. We're uh, what we call the ultra lean uh, company. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we don't have any more questions, so thank you again. And thank you very much. Thank you very much.